uh, the amplifier, you, what you need to do is take the amplifier and get it off the ground, either, either put it on a chair or on a table, so the microphone just catches the sound and not the vibration, it doesn't mess with the quality of the sound. So I didn't know that, I thought that was kind of cool. And, yeah. I spent around 20 hours, that's without driving time, and yeah, around six sessions. It, it was supposed to be way more, way more sessions. It was supposed to be two sessions per week, but I barely did one, and sometimes I didn't even do any, any uh, per week. So uh, it was hard. Uh, the challenges that I had throughout the pro uh, this progress is that I was working up to for his schedule. He works a lot. He's a very busy man. And he works during the day, uh, during the morning. So that was really hard for me because I mean, I'm in classes in the morning, and I'm free in the evenings and stuff. But he's completely opposite. So he can just take me the days at the end of that he's done teaching. It's um, that normally was like at eight uh, or seven or nine. So it varies, and a lot of a lot of times he canceled. He canceled a lot of times because he was really busy. Uh, it was the other thing is that it was real far away, is Roswell, so traffic was a big fact. Uh, and normally it would take me like around one to two hours just to get there. Uh, and also, I didn't, I didn't always have uh, a ride to get me there, so it was really hard to match all the things. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to the yes. Uh, so yeah, time. Uh, another problem. How much? that I had is that uh, the device that we used to record dialysis, IO doc, I didn't have it. I was using the one that he had. So I couldn't got any progress on it. I couldn't record anything. So I had to wait every time to go to the studio so I can keep going with the song. Uh, so I asked like halfway through the process, I was scared that I was not going to finish the song. So I asked someone in the community where uh, in the rock park sleep and uh, this guy had exactly the same machine, exactly the same device. So I was like, oh, cool, so I can record at home, at least the guitars, because that's what I have, and some of the vocals. The other thing that when it happened, I was like, all right, so I'm going to connect my phone. I did, but the problem was, it was the phone in the memory, uh, the memory of my phone. Uh, I started recording a little bit, they ended up killing my phone, I barely did any progress, so I was like, man, whatever. So I took the iPad from uh, the mark boards, I was like, that will be good. A lot of space, big more like, space actually on the screen, more memory, and I can actually work on it easier. No, because that iPad is really old and it doesn't have an air drive. But that's a system that you set uh, files from uh, Apple products to Apple product. And GarageBand, you can just set to an air drive. You cannot send it through email or to uh, Dropbox. It's really hard to do it like that because it just makes an MP3 file. But whatever. Uh, the other challenge that I have was actual recording time. Uh, we spent majority of the time. If I was two hours there, I was spending one hour. We were spending trying to figure out what to do, what to do with the instrument, what makes sense. Because I had an idea of the song and have everything planned out, but not everything when I perform it makes sense correspond to the other instruments. So we were like trying to figure out what to do. So the last 30 minutes to an hour, it was actual recording time. So if you think about it, six sessions, that was just around six hours of the GS recording. So that was really hard to manage. Uh, the collaboration, Matt helped me a lot. He was kind of like a, a director for me. He was, he was not just there like, okay, like sit down, record, okay, I'll record this, like whatever. No, he like actually got, really, really got into the song. He started like really liking it, so he started wanting to change things. Like, you should put this, and you should put this, and like, take this off, and like, a lot of stuff that I was not necessarily agreeing with, like, this is my song, I'm gonna have it like how I want it. But he, he's the one that knows what sounds good and what doesn't. So he gave me a lot of suggestions, he gave me a lot of do's and don'ts. Uh, and we took away from the song, and the song ended up being kind of different to what I had it like started and what I had in my mind. But it's, it, 
it does sound pretty good, and, and uh, but again, it's not what I thought that was going to sound like. Uh, he helped me mixing a lot of the whole thing because it takes a lot of time, and I barely know anything about that. So he did help me mix the whole thing. Uh, and basically, what I'm saying for it that it's not that I'm unhappy, but obviously. Every single song has a collaboration from someone else. It's like how I say here. Uh, every book, uh, a book writer has an editor. So it's not exactly what you have, but he edits it. So it looks better, same music. Yet, we have this song that he tells me to change it a little bit so it sounds better. And also, he was more of a teacher to, to me. He said he was not just there, okay, let's record. Do this, do this, and that's it. I feel like I wasn't in an actual class. He teach me a lot of stuff, mostly voice training. I was actually really sore when I started recording voices, uh, so it was really hard for me like, to actually sing and to reach some notes that I didn't have, that I couldn't reach. So what he told me for an example, it was uh, once I could reach a note, he told me to act like if I'm throwing a ball. Like how it looks like. Uh, but he explained, me, explained to me that once you throw in the ball exactly at the time that you're trying to reach that note, it compresses the diaphragm. So it makes more pressure so you can actually uh, reach that note easier. So I thought that was pretty cool. He teach me a lot of guitar techniques. Like, uh, honestly, the, the song it has pretty complex chords. So he told me, don't play this chord here. Play, let's see, you play with this finger. Play, uh, Play it like easier sometimes. So he taught me a lot of techniques that I wouldn't actually wouldn't use, uh, but he definitely made it easier at the end of the whole thing. Uh, I never, I do play bass, but basically because it's almost the same thing as the guitar, uh, just lower. But he actually teaches me the proper way to play bass, proper form to play bass, uh, and. It's kind of different because the neck of a bass is way thicker than a guitar. So he taught me a lot of stuff with my left hand especially, that is one of the mixed chords, and the guitar and the bass makes the notes. Uh, and with the right hand, that is eventually actually plug with your fingers. So he actually taught me how to probably uh, play it. And he taught me a lot of recording tips, like a lot. Like, I just added uh, doubling the sound and the stereo because those were like the most noticeable. But he taught me a lot of stuff that I didn't even know, and that is really helpful to me, like, just in my life as a musician. Um, this project got me out of my comfort zone for a lot of reasons. Uh, the first reason is that. It got me into a new genre and experimenting with a new genre that I've never actually played. And don't get me wrong, rock has always been my favorite genre, but all the songs that I compose is always like sad and melancholic and slow, you know? I never actually experimented with a rock song. Uh, so it was definitely kind of challenging and weird, like thinking about what to do. Uh, because I started, I started this song from zero, from nothing. So uh, it was kind of hard to think of what to do. Uh, and I guess, yeah, like I said, I started from zero and I developed the song throughout the process. So I started recording without knowing like how exactly what's going to end it up. And I think that's what kind of makes it interesting because uh, it was kind of like a surprise. Like, oh, how is going to end it up being? You know, I, I wasn't sure. Uh, but the collaboration with Matt like, ended up being like, pretty good. So uh, I think this is the hardest thing, and is that. Every time that I went to the studio, I had to perform perfectly every time with each instrument that I'm not that experienced with. Like, I didn't, I didn't have a bass at home, I didn't have a drum set at home. But because we have so much, so much time, I had to perform perfectly every time that we get to the studio so we can record and I keep going. Like, record for the other day, you keep going. So I can have luxury of just like, oh, I'm missing this beat, or I forgot to play this, or like, I had to be concentrated all the time so I don't mess up. And that was really, that was really challenging. Uh, and for the last thing is that I never actually record my singing. This is the first time 
I record myself singing and hear myself by the sound of the wheel. But, yeah. So I'm going to show now the first demo, the first scratch that I made. It's pretty horrible. It's really, really bad. Okay. And I, I made this just because I want it was over in by fall. But I just I used it because I wanted to know have an idea of how it was gonna sound like. So every single thing is like brush and like whatever, like let's play this, let's play this, let's play this. And like I say here, uh I play <laughs> you guys are gonna see I play the bass and the drums with my fingers in the garage band app. There's no voice, it's out of time. Uh, I record it with my acoustic guitar and the actual microphone of the Apple headset. So it's really, really bad. And I, I did all of this by myself. So this was just like the first idea of what I was going to sound like. So here it is. I'm not going to play the whole thing because it's really bad.